I used to hold on to anger and resentment, convinced I was punishing those who hurt me, but I wasn't hurting them, I was hurting myself. Eventually I learned to let go, to forgive, it's not for them but for me. It wasn't easy, but releasing that negativity brought a sense of peace I never knew existed. And you know what? I found that when I let go of the hurt, I made space for healing and happiness. Letting go helped me, and it can help you too. If you find the content useful, subscribing is an easy way to stay connected with all our future uploads. We all experience hurt and disappointment in life. People say or do things that leave us feeling angry, resentful, or betrayed. It's easy to get caught in a cycle of negativity, holding on to those feelings like a life raft. But what if I told you that holding on is actually what's keeping you from moving forward? What if the key to finding peace and happiness is actually letting go? It might sound counterintuitive, but forgiveness isn't about condoning someone's actions or excusing their behavior. It's not about forgetting what happened or pretending it didn't hurt. Forgiveness is about choosing to release the grip those negative feelings have on you. It's about acknowledging the pain and choosing to move forward with a lighter heart. Letting go doesn't mean you're weak or giving in. It takes strength and courage to face the hurt and make a conscious decision to let it go. But the rewards are worth it. When you release the anger and resentment, you free yourself from the weight of those emotions. You open yourself up to the possibility of healing, growth, and new beginnings. Think of it like this. Holding on to anger is like carrying a heavy backpack filled with rocks. It slows you down, weighs you down, and makes it difficult difficult to enjoy the journey. Letting go is like taking off that backpack and setting those rocks down. You can finally stand up straight, breathe freely, and move forward with ease. It's important to recall that forgiveness is a process. It doesn't happen overnight and it's not always easy. It may take time, patience, and a lot of inner work, but it's possible and it's worth it. There are many paths to forgiveness and the journey will be different for everyone. Some people find solace in talking to a therapist or counselor, while others find comfort in journaling or meditation. Some people find strength in prayer or spiritual practices, while others find healing in connecting with nature or spending time with loved ones. The first step towards forgiveness is often the hardest, acknowledging the hurt and allowing yourself to feel the pain. Don't try to bury your emotions or pretend they don't exist. Instead, give yourself permission to grieve, to be angry, to feel whatever it is you're feeling. It's okay to not be okay. Once you've acknowledged the hurt, try to understand it. Why are you feeling this way? What specific words or actions caused you pain? What are the underlying reasons for your anger or resentment? By understanding your emotions, you can start to gain perspective and move towards healing. It's important to recall that everyone makes mistakes, even the people we love and trust. We're all human and we all have flaws. The person who hurt you may not have intended to cause you pain, or they may be struggling with their own issues. This doesn't excuse their behavior, but it can help you to cultivate empathy and understanding. Some Sometimes the best way to forgive someone is to simply accept that you can't change what happened. You can't go back in time and undo the hurt, but you can choose to move forward. This doesn't mean you have to forget what happened or pretend it didn't matter. It simply means you're choosing to focus on the present and the future rather than dwelling on the past. One of the most powerful things you can do for yourself is to set boundaries. This may mean limiting your contact with the person who hurt you, or it may mean communicating your needs and expectations more clearly. By setting healthy boundaries, you protect yourself from further hurt and create a safe space for healing. Forgiveness is a gift you give yourself. It's not about the other person. It's about your own well-being and happiness. It's important to distinguish between forgiveness and reconciliation. Forgiveness is a personal choice to release the negative emotions associated with a hurtful event. Reconciliation, on the other hand, involves restoring a relationship with the person who hurt you. While forgiveness can pave the way for reconciliation, it doesn't necessarily require it. 
Sometimes the most loving act of forgiveness is to let go of a relationship that is no longer healthy or supportive. You don't owe anyone your forgiveness, and you certainly don't owe them your continued presence in their life. It's okay to choose what's best for you, even if that means walking away. If you do choose to reconcile with someone, it's important to do so with clear boundaries and expectations. Communicate your needs and concerns openly and honestly. Be willing to listen to their perspective, but don't feel pressured to compromise your own values or well-being. Forgiveness is a journey, not a destination. It's an ongoing process of learning, growing, and letting go. There will be setbacks and challenges along the way, but don't give up. The rewards of forgiveness are measurable, and the freedom it brings is truly priceless. When you choose to forgive, you choose to live in the present and create a brighter future. You choose to let go of the pain of the past and accept the joy of the present moment. You choose to open your heart to love, compassion, and connection. And that, my friends, is the most powerful choice you can make. When we talk about letting go, it's not just about forgiving others, it's also about forgiving ourselves. We often carry the weight of past mistakes, regrets, and perceived failures, but holding on to those negative feelings only keeps us stuck in the past. By forgiving ourselves, we free up energy and resources to focus on the present and create a better future. Self-forgiveness doesn't mean excusing our mistakes or ignoring the consequences of our actions. It means acknowledging our imperfections and accepting that we're human. We all make mistakes and that's okay. The important thing is to learn from our experiences and move forward with compassion and understanding. Self-love is an essential part of letting go and finding peace. When we love ourselves, we recognize our worth and value. We treat ourselves with kindness, compassion, and respect. We set healthy boundaries and prioritize our own well-being. Self-love is not selfish. It's essential for our mental, emotional, and physical health. When we love ourselves, we're less likely to tolerate disrespect or mistreatment from others. We're more likely to stand up for ourselves and set healthy boundaries. We're also more likely to attract positive relationships and experiences into our lives. One way to cultivate self-love is to practice self-care. This means taking care of our physical, emotional, and spiritual needs. It might involve eating nutritious foods, exercising regularly, getting enough sleep, spending time in nature, practicing mindfulness or meditation, or pursuing hobbies and interests that bring us joy. Another way to practice self-love is to challenge negative self-talk. We often criticize ourselves harshly and focus on our perceived flaws. But by practicing positive self-affirmations and focusing on our strengths, we can build a more positive self-image and cultivate a deeper sense of self-worth. Letting go isn't just about forgiveness, it's about releasing any negative emotions or beliefs that are holding you back. Maybe you're carrying the weight of guilt, shame, or regret. Perhaps you're clinging to a past identity or a version of yourself that no longer serves you. Letting go means freeing yourself from those burdens and allowing yourself to grow and evolve. Sometimes letting go means saying goodbye to relationships that are no longer healthy or supportive. It might mean leaving a job that doesn't fulfill you or moving on from a situation that no longer aligns with your values. It's about making choices that honor your needs and priorities, even if those choices are difficult. Letting go can also mean letting go of expectations. We often create expectations for ourselves, for others, and for how life should unfold. When those expectations aren't met, we can feel disappointed, frustrated, or even resentful. But by letting go of those expectations, we open ourselves up to new possibilities and experiences. We allow life to surprise us and unfold in its own way. It's important to recognize that letting go is a process, not an event. It takes time, patience, and a willingness to face our emotions head on. There will be moments of resistance, doubt, and even fear, but by staying committed to the process, we can gradually release the things that are holding us back and create space for new beginnings. 
Letting go doesn't mean forgetting the past or denying our experiences. It means choosing to move forward with a lighter heart and a more open mind. It means allowing ourselves to heal, to grow, and to become the best version of ourselves. Keep in mind that letting go is a choice. It's a choice to release the negativity and accept the positive. It's a choice to create space for new opportunities and experiences. And it's a choice to live a life that is free, joyful, and fulfilling. So the next time you find yourself holding on to hurt or negativity, don't forget that letting go is a journey, not a destination. And self-love is the compass that will guide you towards a more peaceful and fulfilling life. If this message resonated with you, hit that like button and share this video with someone who might need to hear it. Don't forget to subscribe for more content on personal growth and well-being.